Hello, it's Mark from Two Dog RC. Got a new flight controller in called the Omnibus F4. We've got two versions. This is the non-pro version. The difference is the pro version has a current sensor. So I didn't want to hook that one up, just I wanted to try this one first. So what I'm going to do is give you some pointers or some tips of how to set this up and what to look for for your particular setup to make it easier. I had to do a lot of research on this one when I got it. Eh. So I want to make it easy for you guys because you're my customers and I want to make your life easy. So again, this is the Omnibus F4. It's on our website, 2dogrc.com. A little brief overview, USB, F4 chip, gyro, and this one's got a barometer. That's what this guy is right here. This is, I believe is the OSD chip. It's got a built-in OSD. What that means is you don't have to wire in another OSD and you can configure the built-in OSD right through your Betaflight configurator. There's a ton of videos on that. It's very easy. So I've got here the layout. This is on the website, the pinout of the board. And I'm going to start just very simply here with what I do first is I hook up my receiver. So I use a uh, set XSR or XM Plus or some serial or S bus receiver. This would also work if you're using a spectrum. I'll point out the differences. So according to our pinout, which is this right here, this right here. This first row, J7 we're gonna call it. This first row, that's where you're gonna put in your receiver. Signal, positive, ground. Very very simple there. So just like the diagram, signal, positive, ground. And you'll notice the little jumper. See this little jumper on the diagram? That's this little jumper right here. It's already set for S bus, so don't touch it. Also, if you're using Spectrum, don't touch it. You're using S bus. Now, if you wanna use Spectrum, it's pretty cool, right here. See this this box right here? That's this connector. Your Spectrum satellite receiver will plug right in there. You get your signal, ground, and 3.3 volts. Now this this and this one is all channels uh, UART six. So when you put it in here, you're going to go to UART six in Betaflight, select serial, save, and you're done. You go to configuration tab, select S bus, and then select whatever receiver. If you're using Free Sky stuff. You're going to select S bus. If you're using Spectrum stuff, you're going to select Spectrum 1024 or 2048. I'm not sure which one because I don't use them. So just pick which one. If it doesn't work, check the other one. Okay, another little thing here. So that's your receiver. This is your arrow for which way is forward. So however you mount the board, you know, make sure that you remember and then check that in your GUI before you go fly, obviously. On the back here, this is also your SD card, so you can log stuff. I, I really recommend putting an uh, SD card in there, class 10, and leaving it in. You never know, if you have a crash, you can pull out that data off the black box and go, oh yeah, look, motor number four is bad. Boom, fix it. Instead of trying to post a whole bunch of questions on the internet, and all you really need to do is look at your black box log. All right, so that's how you connect your receiver. Now, how do you power this thing? You got a couple options. What I did on mine was I have a, a power a very plain, simple power distribution board. And from the positive and negative off the power distribution board, I went into these pins right here, this ground and VBAT. So if we look here, it's the third row down. So LEDs, buzzer, ground and VBAT. So ground and VBAT there. So that's how you're gonna power the board. Now, just by doing that, this is automatically gonna get five volts and your receiver is gonna get 3.3 volts. So that's all you really need to do there. That's gonna power the board. Uh, like you said there, you got buzzer right next to it, buzzer plus and minus right next to it. And again, this is on our, our website. So your receiver's here, and here are your motor inputs, solder one, two, three, four. It's good to have a little diagram of which is which on a quad we had our quad, I'll show you a little quad. We're gonna do an X. So we got motor one, motor two, motor three, and motor four. And that's how you're gonna wire it. One, two, three, four. That's it. Now grounds, we can debate on this all day long if you wanna put the grounds in or not. I don't really care. On this chip, I did just because I had them already wired. So what I did, cause that's four more solder points, I just soldered all my ground wires together into a big ball, basically. And then I had one wire come off of that and go into one hole just to make it easy there. And then let's see here. So that's your motors, your receiver. 
powered the board. Now we get the little tricky part. Okay, this is where the video section is for this, for your OSD. So it's, this part's pretty easy. Video in is gonna be your camera. So the top pin's your camera. The bottom pin's your video transmitter. So you take the signal wires from your camera in and then your video transmitter out. That's pretty simple there. Now, to make sure you don't have any issues with the OSD, make sure you have a ground wire coming from the camera to the board and also ground wire going to your video transmitter and out. Depending on what you're using, uh, you can figure this out, how you want to wire that up. But also, what I did is I used the Unify Pro. And what I did was I powered the Unify Pro for my power distribution board off of the, the battery, because it says it's supposed to be able to do it off the VBAT. So I powered it off the battery, and then the HV Pro has an additional ground wire and a video out. So it was very easy to hook up the HV Pro. And I would highly recommend with this setup an HV Pro, a TBS Unify HV Pro, or immersion tramp because what you do then is you take the signal wire from your Unify Pro. Um, all right, here's a Unif Unify Pro. I just put this wire in harness and you kind of see what's going on. I love these things. Okay, so what I did, this says it can take seven to 26 volts. So I powered this off the power distribution directly off the battery leads, boom. Now you see here, you've got an, a ground wire. So I did ground wire. Then this, the yellow one's the signal wire. So I put the signal wire right on the video out. And then I didn't need to power it off of here, so we didn't touch the V out. And then I took off this five out. I took that out of there. So then I took this audio wire. Okay, so it's the white audio wire. And I put it in transmit three, this pin right here. The board two up from the line, that one right there. And what that does is it enables smart audio. So you can change your frequency via the sticks on your transmitter. You can go in your OSD on your transmitter, change the power, change the frequency, the band of your video transmitter. So that means you don't have to figure out any switch buttons or push buttons. Very, very easy. Again, that's why I would highly recommend. It's almost stupid not to. Uh, but Unify Pro, and this also works with the Tramp Immersion. And then once you do that, if you connect to there, then you go into Beta Flight on screen display, or uh, Beta Flight Ports tab. This is three. You're transmitting out from the flight controller. So take three peripherals and change that to uh, TBS. And then you can go in your OSD and change it. It's really, I mean, it's really great. So that's how you kind of connect that. Now, your camera. It's going to go here, V in. So V in and ground. Now what's this RAM button? This is the most confusing part for me, and you really kind of have to think about how you want to do everything. You have two options. So this pin is connected to this pin over here, this RAM VBAT pin. And this is not soldered to anything to start with, so it is what it is. Now, if you want five volts out of this pin here to power your camera, solder across these two pins so they connect. It's called shorting. So you put, put a solder glob or a little wire, or whatever you want to do, these two. Now, that gives you five volts here, and you can power your camera via five volts. If you wanted to have uh, this power to be the same as your battery voltage, you would solder here to here. But you really, I don't know why you'd want to do that. But this, the, so what I did was I soldered these two across, and then this is five volts, so that's what I hook my camera to, using HS1177. Some people don't want to do that. They want to run 12 volts to your camera, so get a power distribution board that's got 12 volts, like a hub OSD or, or just a, a very generic uh, power distribution board. It's got a five and 12 volt regulator on it. That would work good. So that's basically, and then I said I got your buzzer. So now we've connected our camera, video transmitter, our receiver. Again, now this won't use PWM, so it's only S-Bus or PPM. Highly recommend S-Bus. And then your four motors here. Then our battery. Power to board comes over here, ground VBAT. Our buzzer goes here. And then this RAM, you have to do something with this RAM to get some kind of power out of here, otherwise it's nothing. But if you're gonna power your video transmitter and your camera off your 
your power distribution board, then you don't need to do anything with this ram pin. You don't have to connect it here or here. Well, if you like one of these, pick them up at $2RC. They're 30 bucks. It's pretty easy to wire in and enjoy.